Just about everything we know about vampires was created almost a hundred years ago by Bram Stoker in his classic Gothic novel, Dracula. It's been the inspiration for countless stories and movies about a fictional character with a taste for human blood. But today, in the United States, some people believe that vampires actually exist. We think of vampires as part of Eastern European folklore or the result of Hollywood conjuring, not as the stuff of small-town America. But in the late 18th century, belief in the undead led to bizarre rituals designed to keep the newly deceased from coming back to prey on the living. The Connecticut countryside is dotted with old cemeteries. In Griswold, a dark secret lay dormant for nearly two centuries and has only recently been unearthed. In Washington, at the prestigious Walter Reed Army Medical Center, remains uncovered in Griswold were analyzed by Paul Sedzik, a curator at the National Museum of Health and Medicine. I was given a call by the state archaeologist in Connecticut to help identify and analyze some skeletal material that was found at this site in Griswold, Connecticut. What happened was some kids had found a couple of skulls laying at the bottom of a little ravine and uh, they brought them to the police and the police called the medical examiner. The medical examiner did some research into the records in that, in that time period and came up with vampire activity or vampire cults uh, in the 18th and 19th century. Archaeologists probed the graves for mutilated corpses the telltale signs of suspected vampires. The next step in verification was determining the cause of death. Pretty evident to see the cause of death in the skeleton from, from Connecticut, this empire skeleton. There's evidence of tuberculosis in some of the upper left ribs. And here we can see evidence here, this whitish area that we're seeing close to the articulation with, with the vertebrae. Tuberculosis played a major role in the vampire folklore of the 1800s. It was believed that those who died of TB could come back and infect the living. So a ritual developed to ensure that a corpse's eternal resting place really was eternal. What they actually did was take the bones here in the chest and jumble them up like someone had just taken their hand and kind of moved it around in that fashion. They then took the two femora, the, the upper leg bones, crossed this one here and this other one on top of it over across like that. They then took the skull and placed that right in this area and then they closed the crypt back up. The graves were opened anywhere from two weeks to a year after burial. Graves of dearly departed loved ones or anyone who died of tuberculosis. What floored me is just that people could actually believe that someone dying of tuberculosis could actually cause the death of loved ones. And, and there are accounts in New England, especially of, of, of men going into the graves of their daughter and removing their hearts and burning them. and, and uh, you know, fathers doing it to sons, sons doing it to fathers. I mean, very close fam family units. There were probably lots of people attending these exhumations and killing of vampires. And, and when you do read them, there can be upwards of three or 400 people. The whole town would probably turn out. You know, it's a major social event. Digging up wives, husbands, sons, daughters, um, and trying to kill them again. I mean, that's something that we couldn't even conceive of today. Um, I couldn't imagine going in, digging up the, you know, the grave of my daughter and trying to kill her again. It was just something that completely would never enter my mind. In many parts of America, you can still hear chilling tales of vampires today. In Los Angeles, professor of folklore and author Noreen Dresser researches living vampires. Very often, the act of drinking blood is a prelude to sex. People who call themselves vampires. Aha. Uh -huh. A corpse supposed to come to life at night and leave its grave and suck the blood of sleeping people. If a person wants to dress in black and sleep during the daytime and be awake at night and walk through the graveyards and listen to gothic music, uh, and that person's not hurting anyone, including the fact that that person might want to drink someone's blood and someone is willing to give it to them. I don't see where that's harming anyone. I'd say the best thing about being a vampire is the taste of the blood and being with someone who trusts you and will let you drink their blood. Katrina is proof that vampire practices are real and still occur today. There are certain well-known criminals, for example, Richard Ramirez and Ted Bundy, who in reports, there were just little side notes, 
that they did drink blood from their victims, but that was never presented as the main motivation for, for committing their crimes. I would never do anything to a child or to an animal. This is something that I've only done with a consenting adult. You know, they have to be willing to do this, and anyone that I've ever done anything like this with actually has enjoyed it. Some vampires attempt to take blood here from the carotid artery. Um, however, that's rather clumsy and it's also quite dangerous. So this is not really used as often as using, taking it from the arm. I can use an instrument like this, which is a medical scalpel. It's very sharp. It can be sterilized with alcohol, so there won't be any infection. And it's painless. Blood is an acquired taste. The best place is somewhere on the arms or the hands, and I'll just, you know, continue drinking until the wound stops bleeding. Sometimes this leads to a relationship where they say, well, that was kind of interesting. I enjoyed it. Would you like to do it again sometime? You could be attacked, mugged, robbed, shot, uh, killed on the freeway. I mean, our life is so fraught with dangers and fears that it's a lot more satisfying to focus on something scary when we know what all the rules of that scariness are. Why does the myth of vampires still persist? Perhaps it's because we are still plagued by diseases and our lives are still precarious as they were in ancient times. But unlike the rest of us, a vampire never gets sick, never grows old, and never dies.